Hey, what's going on, you CISSP wannabes? These are the IT Dojo CISSP questions of the day. I am Colin Weaver, and each day I'm going to ask you two CISSP questions for you to ponder and practice upon as you're studying for your exams, which I hope is going well. But let's go ahead and get right into it. Question number one, coming at you today from the world of cryptography. And when you're dealing with mobile devices, they tend to place an emphasis on battery consumption and they also tend to have reduced processing power. Um, given that situation, which of the following encryption techniques would be most appropriate to implement? Go ahead and give those a look. Think about what the best answer choice could be from the options presented. Click pause if you need to. When you're ready, click play and we'll break it down. First option listed up here is RSA. Um, RSA is, is actually two different algorithms. One is for, used for asymmetric cryptography as well as for a digital signature algorithm. Um, over the years, RSA has required increasingly long keys and, uh, in order to stay secure. And those increasingly long keys actually go in and uh, increase the overhead on the system. So that's not the best choice for what we're looking at right here. Uh, next batter up on the list is uh, Diffie-Hellman Key Exchange or Diffie-Hellman. Uh, Diffie-Hellman is a key exchange protocol. Um, while that's uh, key generation for Diffie-Hellman is actually quite fast, which is why it's used for generating ephemeral keys, um, it's actually not going to be used for any actual encryption processes. It's really involved in the key exchange process. So again, not what, really what we're looking for right here. The next two options are protected EAP and EAP TLS. Uh, while certainly both of these options are things that you might find implemented on mobile devices, they're not actually encryption techniques by themselves they may ultimately lead to encryption keys being uh, generated in exchange, but they themselves are not involved in the actual encryption. So they really aren't encryption techniques or algorithms. They're more about creating authenticated connections between two devices. Uh, then you have elliptic curve cryptography, and that is exactly what we're looking for in this situation. Um, ECC, to, um, in many respects, is kind of poised as the, as the long-term replacement for RSA. And there are several reasons that are kind of positioning it that way. Uh, one is, and you got to be careful about the way that you read this, a lot of times people say that ECC is more secure than RSA. That's, that's not entirely true. What they're, what they're really meaning to say is that ECC is um, as secure as RSA is using significantly smaller keys, um, usually by you know, at least 12 times smaller. So you could have a 256-bit you know, a, a ECC key being of an equivalent strength to like a 3076 bit RSA key. And so that's really what they mean when they say that it's stronger, it's stronger based upon the key length. And so, well, by all measure, measures, a, uh, you know, a 256 bit or, you know, uh, RSA key would be considered obscenely weak compared to a 256 bit ECC key actually being extremely strong. Um, those smaller keys ultimately require uh, less storage, less, um, uh, less CPU cycles, and that has a potential to lead to uh, uh, power savings on a, on a mobile device. But really, it's the CPU cycles and the, and the reduction on system overhead that's, that's a big allure for ECC. Then the first of the last guy on the list is AES, the Advanced Encryption Standards. Uh, that's actually a mechanism for going in and implementing usually encryption uh, for devices. Uh, that's not really going to address uh, issues dealing specifically with this question that, that, that lend themselves towards uh, power savings uh, in the form of battery life or uh, CPU cycles. That's not really what we're looking for. And then the very last option on the list is uh, Vernum Cipher. Uh, Vernum Cipher, more commonly known as a one-time pad, which is considered to be you know, unbreakable encryption. Okay, question number two. Blowfish is an algorithm that was designed by Bruce Schneier. Uh, it was originally intended as a replacement for uh, DES, the data encryption standard. Um, of the options that you see listed over here, uh, which of them are characteristics of Blowfish? Um, go ahead and click pause, give them a read. There are several choices for you to look at there. And then when you're ready, click on play again and we'll break it down. Okay, looking at the answer choices, first one up says that key sizes of 128, 192, and 256 bits. Uh, no, those are key sizes associated with AES, uh, not with Blowfish. Second option says key sizes from 32 to 448 bits. Yes, this is one of the characteristics of Blowfish is that it supports a variable key size, which is very cool. It operates on 64-bit blocks of data, and then you can have a variable key size in its implementation. Uh, third and fourth choices, symmetric or asymmetric. Uh, Blowfish is symmetric. 
Then the question is, is it patented or unpatented? Uh, from the very beginning, Bruce Schneier was very explicit that Blowfish is unpatented. It is free for anybody to use in any country. And then the last two, is it used in Bcrypt or Scrypt? Uh, and the answer is it's used in Bcrypt. Uh, it is not used in Scrypt. So, looking at those choices there, you've got a variable key size anywhere from 32 to 448 bits. It is uh, symmetric in its use as a symmetric algorithm. It is completely unpatented and royalty free, and it is used in Bcrypt. Okay, I hope you found those two questions useful. Um, stuck to the world of uh, cryptography today, which is cool. I like that particular topic. Um, if you found those questions helpful and nice uh, in your studies, there's a like button down there and you should be clicking on it right around now. So go ahead and do that for me. If you wanna get these questions every single day, be sure to subscribe and let me know how you did in the comments below too. I'm kind of curious how, that, how, that's, uh, how it's going for you. Um, I will see you tomorrow. <laughs>